Hello, welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today, we're looking at an overview of all the different resins that, um, that Photocentric do. So first of all, we're taking a look at the daylight resins. So these daylight resins work on a 460 nanometer uh, light source. And uh, as a result, they are used in the magnets that are here. So let's go through some of the ones that we have. So we've got the draft resin. So this is that turquoise draft resin, which already looks really cool, but I appreciate that's not the point of it. So, so what's the application for, for so draft resin here? For the draft resin, the main purpose of this material is for it to be sort of a rapid prototyping resin. Mm -hmm. It's able to withstand slice thicknesses going down to 25 microns all the way up to 250 microns. Okay. So you're able to rapidly produce both highly detailed small parts and larger parts in rapid time. More designed for fluid chambers, more designed for the prototyping of concepts rather than the functional end use parts. So not necessarily mechanical parts, but certainly fit and fitment exactly. so that you can initially say, yes, this is the right size. And then you could move on to something more like the high temp or the Duramax, which would allow you to then actually exactly. test function. Because of its translucent nature as well, it offers a turquoise finish. So that way for fluid chambers and where you need to actually see the movement and liquids and the changing, it is really beneficial. Fantastic. Then we move on to high temp. So, um, so the high temp film, the high temp resin is obviously for high temperatures applications, <laughs> but what sort of temperatures and statistics are we talking about that that can withstand? So the high temp dual 400, really useful resin for those high temperature applications. It's got a 230 degree HDT, so it's got beneficial parts towards injection molding, towards tooling, and certain high temperature applications in the automotive or potentially aerospace sector. It comes in a amber finish, so you get nice crisp detail, nice uh, outer surface finish. But as you can see in some of the parts, you can easily design in internal chambers, so fluids could flow around if they're going to be at a very high temperature. Yeah, it's worth noting, guys, that when it comes to these kinds of commercial applications of resins, it's really hard to translate that from an FDM world. So a lot of our viewers do have FDM machines, um, and if they have resin machines, they have very small ones that are UV resins. Um, Somebody will probably ask which one of these is probably most like something like ABS, mm -hmm. which has a 100 degree-ish HDT, um, but has a decent amount of, uh, of dimensional accuracy, mm -hmm. has, a, has a low warp, and, and things like that. So would we be moving on to the Durable and the Duramax in that instance, or would you say something like the high temp In that work? one, we'd actually skip all the way down to the family and go to the hard black resin. Okay. Depending on what material properties with SLA printing, it'll determine on what's the best resin for the, for the purpose. So if you're looking for that kind of prototyping, that kind of, it's not gonna be under a lot of forces, not gonna be under constant impact, your draft or your DL400 is very suitable, very useful. If you're looking for that kind of part that's functional, impact resistant, and if I'm honest, is gonna to go through a lot of wear and tear, that's when you enter into your Duramax and your durable family. But these are all geometry agnostic. They're not any more or less capable from a printing perspective. They can all produce the same kinds of parts. It's just the end product's application that would be, that would be different and challenged. Oh, exactly. All of the materials are both conceptualized, designed, developed, optimized right here in our facility in Peterborough. And then it goes across to industrialization who test and validate it, not just on a one-off doing one small print scale, but testing that it can be scaled and it can be suitable for mass manufacturing, mass production purposes. So if people were coming to you, you would help them A, with the design, B, with the, with the, actual, with the actual initial selection of their resins and then application of that into Print Farm as well. But you can consult on that whole end-to-end -end piece. It's not just a, mm -hmm. you, tell us, you tell us everything and then we make it. You actually offer a degree of consulting service as well to say, well, this is what we would suggest for that particular application. So part of what we offer with our part production service is we do offer a pre-production service where we go through the part, we provide advice, we provide guidance and understand the best way to mass manufacture that part. When it comes to printers and resins, if customers are wanting to buy additional resin or they're wanting to know what's the best resin for their purpose, we can actually consult and provide advice on which material will offer the right properties or which material will offer the right results, whether in terms of temperature resistance, impact resistance, functionality, or speed of print. Okay, fantastic. So then we come back to the durable resin. So we've already got some example prints of this, which I have to say, we'll put some pictures up. I mean, they're absolutely flawless. There's just not a missed, there's not a missed anything. There's no anti-aliasing lines. There's no, there's no step to any of it. There's a slight texture, but that texture very is- Very interesting to mention as well. These are actually printed at 250 micron thick slices. So wow. rapidly fast print time, and if I'm honest, the aesthetic finish, 
fantastic. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. So durable, what would be the sort of general applications for the durable? Family? So in terms of the durable and the Duramax family, they're very similar in terms of their impact resistance, very similar in terms of what they're suitable for. Yeah. More suitable for those functional end use parts, push fit clips, parts that need to withstand day-to-day -day wear and tear. Entering more from, pro, entering away from prototyping, more into that production end use parts. Okay, fantastic. So then we move on to the Duramax. So the Duramax is edging towards that hardness side. Um, you've got some really complex geometries here. So the Duramax almost has a flex to it afterwards. Mm -hmm. So does it have a different shore hardness to everything else? So in terms of material properties, the Durable and the Duramax are very similar materials, but just slightly different in terms of their impact resistance. The Duramax is designed to offer that slightly greater impact resistance. And as you said, a little bit more flexibility. So, I mean, we'll, we'll show you in the video in a second, guys, but I mean, I am wrenching on this and, and I, it's just not, but it's got a flex to it. It's actually got a, like, a, like a geometric honeycomb design that they've, that they've put in there. And I mean, it is, it has properly got a flex to it. It almost feels like vulcanized rubber. So it is, it, this material is specifically designed for that purpose of functional end use, impact resistance, and withstand the bending, withstand the movement. Right. It's one of the things where, as manufacturer of photopolymer resins, we don't just want to provide a basic prototype of resin, we want to offer the capabilities to everyone. Showing where additive manufacturing can actually dovetail into injection molding and dovetailing into other production methods. Yeah, we'll do some, we'll some close-ups of these as well, guys. But I mean, some of these are incredibly complex geometries that for a start, you absolutely couldn't achieve inside of regular FDM. This is, this is above and beyond what FDM printing can do. Um, and I'm an FDM printer, but you have to accept there are limitations with really any technology that you apply. Um, these, I mean, these, you, you've not even got any supports between these two fan grill layers. And these hexagons are absolutely, this honeycomb design is absolutely perfect. Like, it has come out astonishingly good. So, with these specific parts, this is another example of where you're designing something for additive manufacturing. If you try and produce a part that's for injection molding on additive manufacturing, I mean, you can make it, but it's going to take time to adapt, increase support structures, and if I'm honest, not more hassle, but it takes longer to actually get the best part. Yeah. If you design a part around additive manufacturing, you can make it so parts like this, print flat on the build plate, minimal or no supports, and they're easy to print, easy to wash, easy to post-process, and then remove straight for the purpose. Fantastic. So then we come on to the, uh, the concept, which is in a really cool green like that. Again, a flawless print. So what's the application for the concept? So the concept green is really useful material, more suitable for figurines, more suitable for miniatures. Those sharp, smooth details, so the name kind of gives it away in that sense, conceptualizing designs. Yeah. So for figurine sector, if you're going to print, wash, cure them, and then use them for painting, fantastic and ideal material. Yeah, I mean, got, we'll, do a, we'll do a quick close up now, but I cannot believe how crisp and clean the text is that's on the side of this of this little key ring like it is clean it is super sharp corners super super detailed what sort of micron layer is this then so the all of our resins apart from say some of the specific materials can actually go down to 25 micron in the z height okay um, so say certain materials going down to 25 microns although it can do it it's not the most suitable but we have in our software available where you can go down to that to offer really nice accurate results or you can go up to much thicker slices if they're functional end use parts. Okay, fantastic, and then we come on to the hard. So the hard is probably what people would consider a more ABS slash ASA level of hardness. Um, again, still doing some very complex geometry. So whenever you are FDM printing and you change material, there are genuinely some sort of compromises that you have to make for each material. So for example, if you move from PLA to PETG, the bridging, it's abysmal. If you move to ABS, then doing overhangs and things like that are also pretty terrible. Um, with this, this printed completely straight up and there is nothing on it that even hints that you can't even see the steps in between the layers. So that's where it's about designing the parts around additive manufacturing, around the specific technologies. So that's where parts like this, they've been adapted or designed solely for the purpose of printing in this method of technology as opposed to injection molding or as opposed to FDM printing as an example. Yeah. It's one of the main benefits of what you can achieve and what can be produced. The hard black resin itself, really suitable. It offers nice sharp details and nice crisp surface finish once it's fully washed down and post-cured. Yeah, fantastic. 
And that's a, that's a point that's really important to bring out, guys. So when it comes to when it when it comes to three D printing, whether this is FDM, whether it's resin, whether you know whether you're using even even in the uh, in the powder based SLS printing and things like that. 3D printing is a tool in your toolbox. It is not the entire toolbox. 3D printing is not the be all and end all. It's killing all other manufacturing. There are still there are still applications that 3D printing may not be right for, and it's important that when you're picking your parts and you're picking your materials, you're picking your way you want to print it, that you're designing and building something that is appropriate for the tool that you're using. And 3D printing is absolutely perfect for these complex geometries these higher volume parts that are very uniform. Um, this pen that was 3D printed, we've just seen, we've, I'll throw up a picture of the build plate of, of these. They printed like 70 of these all at once. And they are a, really quite a complex geometry all the way down the pen with like a, with again, another sort of geometric design that goes all the way down. Something that isn't possible with FDM printing um, without an awful lot of work and tuning. And you certainly wouldn't be printing 60 on a build plate at any one time. Um, and something that would actually be fairly difficult to do with something like injection molding. It's a, it's, it's a unique application that perfectly suits this tool. And that's always important, the right tool for the right job. 3D printing can do anything, but it shouldn't do everything. But that is one of the main benefits of LCD printing in that sense, as opposed to FDM. It doesn't matter if you've got one part or if you've got a whole bed of parts, it takes the same amount of time to cure all those layers. Whereas with FDM, fantastic technology, drawing the filament points down. If you do more than one part, it's going to drag out the time frame. Yeah. With LCD, it essentially turns your 3D objects into a 2D stack of paper. Doesn't matter if you've got one dot on the paper or a whole page of dots, it cures that one layer at a time. Yeah. So it truly does open up the potential for large scale part production and mass manufacture. Yeah, I mean, obviously you guys have already seen the Magna. The Magna is big. They then have the Maximus and the Maximus is huge. So I think it's like a 23 inch screen on the Magna at the moment. And then the Maximus is like a 48, is it? The Maximus does go even, even larger. So the LC Maximus is our next answer on how we can go even larger. Yeah. The evolution of large scale LCD printing and mass manufacture. More designed towards producing large parts rather than multiple small parts. Yeah. But that's where it's going to lend itself in terms of automotive and in terms of aerospace. The prototype and production of those large parts that you can't really produce in other technologies. So uh, now we're taking a look at some of the UV resins that you do. So um, aside from these, you also do some relatively generic, different coloured UV yeah. resins. Those aren't really, th those, are, those are manufactured in the UK, they're bottled in the UK, they're quality controlled here. Um, they don't have any specific properties that is different to necessarily anything else, but they are sold in much larger volumes than in other places. So most UV resins you can only really get in like 250 and 500 mil bottles which as printers are starting to get larger means that you have to buy like a case of the things and then try and store them and everything else these are obviously coming in one kilos but do they come in larger ones as well so we do one kilo on all of our UV materials we do offer some of them in larger five kilo materials depending right. on the materials so we've got two specific materials here our crystal clear and our polyglass we do then have additional materials in terms of our durable UV 80 and in terms of our high tensile materials, hard materials, suitable for prototyping and in some cases production functional end use parts. Yeah. So these obviously work on the, these obviously work on normal domestic UV printers on the 405 nanometer um, UV scale. I don't really know what that scale is, but that's what it is, and it's that number. 
Um, so whereas the daylight stuff works on the 460s. So, um, so these would work in you know, your generic photons and things like that. Um, I know from experience that trying to get things clear is a, it's a really drawn out process. So we've done a couple of videos on it where we've tried to do windshields and lights and things like that. You have to, you have to print it, then you have to, then you have to wash it, then you have to clear coat it, then you cure it, and then halfway through the cure, you have to clear coat it again, and you might be lucky and it won't yellow. Some of them are different, some of them do yellow, they look awful, and then some of them will just yellow over time. Um, you guys obviously have been actively developing this for quite some time. Um, you've got some pretty optically clear stuff here. So this one's the crystal clear, yeah. and it's actually pretty clear, to be fair. I mean, we've got some close-up shots, but like, I mean, that's, as, that's pretty clear. Bear in mind, that's also, it's not quite lens quality clear, but at the same time, that is, that is very, very clear. Um, but then we've also got the polyglass. So what's the, other than the, other than the fact that one comes out blue and one comes out clear, what's the, what's the sort of the main application difference between the two? Okay, so on these ones, we've obviously got the crystal clear and the polyglass. Two different materials in terms of what they offer, but both designed to offer clear results. These are part of our UV DLP family, so meaning they'll work on UV DL DLP printers, like the Envision Tech, the B9, the Asiga series printers, but it will also work on the UV LCD printers. So One How, Anycubic, Elegoo, Frozen, and Theophilus. In terms of material properties, they're both very similar. They're offering a hard, high tensile material. However, the colorway is what's different. So the polyglass is designed to offer that glass-like effect with mm -hmm. a slight blue-green tinge. So it's designed where you can get optically clear results, but where you've got a slight tinge if it's on a thicker part. Crystal clear, however, we've put a lot of work, a lot of formulation and development time into developing a crystal clear material that significantly reduces the yellowing over, over time. A lot of UV resins, clear resins, have this issue of premature yellowing. Yeah. And it is something not a lot of manufacturers have found a way around or a solution to solve it. On this one, we've put time, resources, and dedication into creating the right material for the job. Fantastic. So guys, we'll put up a, uh, we'll put up a little video in a second, but this is so clear that we put one of our business cards behind it and you can actually still use, we could actually still see the QR code through it and my phone could still read the QR code and take me to the correct address. So that is how optically clear we're looking here. It's not obviously lens quality, but if you were printing something like this, I'm assuming that you could probably laser etch this after the fact and turn it into something like a really cool trophy or like award ceremony well, things. This is one of the main benefits about additive manufacturing. Why add the additional laser etch process when you can, at the design stage, actually get the embossing put into it? And then you print it out, minimal time to actually do any part finishing afterwards. There you go. So guys, that is some of the resins that these guys do. Definitely go and check out their website. There are loads of resins and loads of applications. They've got them both for the daylight and for the UV side. Um, we'll put up some links and some, uh, and some codes and things in the description so that we can, uh, so you can get to the site, get to the right areas, and we'll make sure we differentiate between the UV side and the daylight side so that you go to the right bit of the site. Thanks very much for joining us. We'll see you guys soon.